Hey, hey, hey. Today is National Tell a Joke Day, as well as happening to be National Roller Coaster Day. Mm. So your best bet would be to head over to your local uh, amusement park, jump on a roller coaster, and start telling jokes. Then again, maybe not. Anywho, the Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, and I'm back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com, of which I happen to be the Grand Poobah. So howdy, howdy, howdy. If this is your first time joining me, this is a very, very relaxed show. I talk mainly about tabletop gaming. Today is Thursday, August 16th. So on Thursdays, I like to look at role-playing games. So I am going to take a first look and dive into Kids on Bikes today. This is the Deluxe Edition, which is from Hunter's Entertainment and Renegade Game Studios. So stay tuned for that. I will be taking a first look and uh, I'm pumped. I really want to see what's cooking with Kids on Bikes. Anyway, I did open the show by saying today is National Tell a Joke Day. So I guess I'll tell a joke. And the joke I really wanted to tell is a little too risque. So I will go with a different joke. So the joke begins. A father is talking to his son and his son is just about to get married the next day. And he takes him off to the side and he says, all right, son, this is what I want you to do on your wedding night. I want you to take your pants off ball them up and throw them right in your wife's face and say, hey, when you can wear those, you'll be the boss around here. And the groom says, okay, dad. So sure enough, wedding takes place. It's the newlyweds off in their honeymoon suite. And the husband takes off his pants, balls them up, throws them in the bride's face and says, uh, there, uh, when, when you can wear those, you'll be the boss around here. And the, the bride looks at him, kind of side-eyed, and says, Oh, really? Okay. She takes her panties off, twirls them around, and throws them at her new husband's feet. And says, Okay, well, when you can wear those, you'll be the boss around here. And he looks at her and he says, Wait a second, honey. You know I can't get into those. And she says, oh, no, that's right. And you won't until you change your ways. Bum bumps. All right, not the greatest joke in the world, but still, eh, not a bad joke. All right, so I've got some news for us today. Before I jump into that, I do want to point out that this is a live stream. Chat is available on YouTube. If you have a question, comment, or just want to say hello, be sure to chime in. Chat is not on screen, but uh, and that's kind of how I keep some of the stranger commenters at bay. But I do keep an eye on chat and I will respond. So fire away if you'd like. I know quite a few people watch. They don't jump into chat and that's A-OK. So anyway, as I mentioned, I've got some news today. And my first item is about Quinn Games releasing a new edition of the Old West game Carson City this month. And it is a big addition. I've got the dope. The year is 1858 in Carson City, Nevada. You've rounded up a team of courageous cowboys. And your plan is to buy up the best parcels of land in this new town. Then build them up with the most prosperous ranches, mines, saloons, etc. Carson City Big Box is a collection of the Carson City base game, the Golden Guns expansion, as well as the upcoming Horses and Heroes expansion. The game board has been redesigned and updated to support a sixth player, as well as the Horses and Heroes expansion. The game is played in four rounds, and in each one of them, the players choose one of the characters, which give certain advantages. When several players claim the same action, a duel is fought, and the player with the most firepower wins the action. 
In the end, the most prominent citizen in Carson City, as measured by victory points that can be won both during and after the game, wins. Carson City Golden Guns, the first expansion, contains updated buildings and houses, new buildings, new double-sided characters, the Indian character, which was previously a promotional item at Spiel 2010, and a separate expansion called The Outlaws. Carson City Horses and Heroes, the second expansion, lets players visit the rodeo to claim additional victory points and use horses to unlock special actions. Three new characters are also added to the game. The Carson City Big Box is for two to six players, ages 12 and up, and plays in 90 to 180 minutes. The game will carry an MSRP of $120 when it arrives on August 29th. Wow, $120. That uh, that needs to be an awfully big box of Carson City. Uh, $120 is, I don't know, I, I'll be the first to say I've never played Carson City. I've heard it's a pretty cool game. But $120, that better be a big box with lots of goodies in it. Anyway, my next piece, One Method Monkey has an interesting looking fantasy game, which is now available following a successful 2017 Kickstarter run. And I've got the dope on Heroes Crossing. Monsters and madmen are everywhere. Glory awaits the stalwart heroes who would stand against the forces of evil. You're not one of those heroes. Mm -hmm. You're the people behind the heroes, the shopkeepers and the smithies and the potion brewers who outfit adventurers with the gear necessary to undertake their quests. In Heroes Crossing, players manage individual towns that produce and sell resources heroes need on their journeys. Your task is to juggle supply and demand to best outfit the heroes with what they'll need. Do your job wrong, and a brave knight may end up fighting a dragon with nothing but twigs and shoelaces. Hate when that happens. Do your job right, and you may save the world. The game utilizes a color-coded dice drafting system where players pick dice one by one to perform actions such as generating new resource cubes, moving resources around town, bidding on new buildings, or selling resources to heroes. Depending on the action, the color and number on the die matter in different ways. Use a red weapon die and you can generate weapon resources in your town, whereas a blue magic die may allow you to move magic resources from your production centers to your shops. Higher numbers on the dice make your actions more powerful, but they also make you a target. Players can steal dice from each other or send spies into the towns of players who have an edge. Each hero has different needs. Some may want several weapons, whereas others may want a mix of magic and potion resources. If you have the corresponding resources in your town, you can sell those to the hero, where every sale awards victory points. The more you sell, the more victory points you gain, and the more likely it is you'll win. Heroes Crossing is for 2-4 to four players, ages 14 and up, and plays in 60 to 120 minutes. The game is available right now and does carry an MSRP of $50. Gotta say that this seems like a pretty unique game, fairly interesting. It does remind me a little bit, and it's mainly because the artwork that's on the heroes cards and the buildings and uh, some of the, like the, just the, uh, the areas of town. It looks like it's like 16-bit graphics, so it has a bit of a... Uh, boss monster feel to it as far as the artwork and strangely enough the box artwork doesn't reflect that whatsoever which i think is a little strange i think that uh the, the publishers may have wanted to go with the actual 16-bit graphics on the cover of the box as opposed to what they did because it just seems a little strange right you you see the box cover you figure oh the artwork's going to be that way in the game but it's not Regardless, I do have to say that Heroes Crossing looks like it could be some fun. It might be pretty interesting. I should say, if you're a fan of fighting anime or video games, then you might be interested in checking out a title which is currently up for Kickstarter funding from NinjaBot. 
Here's the dope on Pop Cats Fighter. Inspired by video games, this tabletop game will have you fighting in a 1v1 or 2v2 battle to become the next hair weight champion. <laughs> They're cats. Get it? Get it? Popcats Fighter Unleash the Furry is a unique turn-based strategic card game that captures the essence of a fighting video game in a tabletop experience. Well, players will fight against each other in sweet 1v1 cat fights or in 2v2 dynamic duos. Welcome to the world of Pop Cats Fighter, where the greatest fighters converge to battle each other in an epic combat to win the Hairweight Champion title and the $9 trillion grand prize. $9 trillion. Becoming the next Hairweight Champion of the world is no easy task, but Pop Cat fighters like Pearl, get it, Pearl, Sparkles, Perserker and El Tigre, just to name a few, will do their best to claw their way to the top. Are you ready to fight? Do I have to mention that uh, there was a video, no, I shouldn't should say was, there is a video from NinjaBot on the Kickstarter page, but I had no way to actually get it. There's no way to download it so I could share it with you, and it's not up on YouTube, so... I do apologize, I don't have a video. The video is only about a minute long. But do want to point out that Pop Cats Fighter is currently about a third of its way to its funding goal. And you can reserve a copy of the core game for a $35 pledge through September 10th. If you go to the Kickstarter, I do want to mention that there are quite a few previews. I know the Dice Tower did one. I did not watch the video, so I don't know if it's Tom or someone else. Uh, who's involved with the Dice Tower, who did the video, but there are like loads and loads of people who have previewed it. Remember, they can't be called reviews because it's a prototype game, but uh, looks like uh, there's quite a bit of buzz about Pop Cat Fighter. I do have to say, since today is Thursday and I love talking about RPGs, I, I like talking about RPGs all the time, but I try to focus a little more on Thursdays. I always happen to be on the lookout, too, to help save you some money. And you can do so in the newest bundle of holding. And I've got the dope. Adventure! This one dice bundle features the quick and flexible universal tabletop role-playing system by Cake Bread and Walton, makers of Renaissance, Clockwork, and Chivalry, etc., with a one dice rule book, a solitary six sided die, and just a few minutes of prep time, you can create characters and start running an adventure in any genre fantasy, science fiction, pulp, steampunk, superheroes you name it. One dice is an ideal pickup system for novices and old hands alike. Each one dice title is a standalone rule book, complete in itself, with the concise one dice system, campaign settings, and special rules tailored to its genre. This bargain price bundle gives you a dozen rule books, each a springboard into a new genre, or mix and match the rules for your own setting. For just $7.95, you'll get all six games in the starter collection with a retail value of $47 as DRM free PDF ebooks, including the one dice rule books for fantasy, urban fantasy, cyberpunk, steampunk, and pulp plus the One Dice Universal Rules to create your own worlds and backgrounds. And that's not all. There's more. If you pay more than the threshold price of $16.09, you'll level up and also get the entire bonus collection with six more One Dice rule books worth an additional $55, including Space, Supers, B-Movies, Robin Hood, and the one dice versions of two Cake Bread and Walton RPGs that have been presented before in their Renaissance D100 system editions, Pirates and Dragons, and the steampunk fantasy Abney Park's Airship Pirates. You can score these savings for another 18 days. And don't forget, 10% of your payment, after payment gateway fees, of course, will be donated to the charity designated by One Dice Publisher, Cake Bread and Walton, and it is Doctors Without Borders. 
So I always share the cool bundle of holdings that come up because number one, you can score huge savings. I have heard good stuff about one dice. I have never looked into one dice, but I am always a huge proponent of cool RPG systems that are very easy to introduce people who do not play role-playing games to. So it's got that going for it. It's got plenty of genres for you to dive into and you actually help make a difference in other people's lives because 10% goes to a charity. And as I mentioned, this time out, it is Doctors Without Borders. Anyway, moving right along, another RPG news piece. Modifius Entertainment and Clockwork Publishing have released the latest adventure for Space 1889 in book and PDF formats. And here's the dope on City at the Center of the Earth. Since inventors Edison and Armstrong set out on their first journey to Mars in 1870, mankind has been enthused by the worlds lying beyond the ether, and nations and enterprises, inventors and explorers, have ventured into the depths of space. German inventor Elke Eggers, however, has no interest in going up. Driven by her memories of the fantastic tales her grandfather Engsgar used to tell her about, or I should say used to tell her about, underground civilizations, she has dedicated her life to seeking ways to voyage underground and find the mysterious city at the center of the Earth. This adventure is set on Earth, and in particular, inside it. On an adventurous journey a la Jules Verne's journey to the center of the Earth, in particular, Edgar Rice Burroughs, uh, it was, I think it's pronounced Pellucidar? Pellucidar? I don't know. I have, I'm familiar with, like, the Lost World. I'm not familiar with his um, kind of hollow earth stories. The characters join Elke Eggers in her giant mole drill, digging its way towards the Earth's core. But sabotage and unknown threats make the voyage challenging and dangerous. Will they reach the mysterious city Elke Egger is convinced exists down there? And if so, which mysteries and secrets await the adventurers there? But creatures live in the gigantic caverns deep down in the center of the Earth. And where do the inhabitants and possibly even builders of this world beneath the world come from? Hmm. The adventurers can be of any nationality, even if the starting point of the journey is set in the German Empire. The events in this adventure challenge various character archetypes with tasks matching their expertise. Academics, scientists, and explorers are best suited for this endeavor, but engineers, mechanics, or soldiers will be useful as well. This adventure is written for the ubiquity version of the Space 1889 RPG. The physical soft cover, I do believe it's a soft cover, of the 32-page adventure is now available from Modifius for $10.99, or you can score the PDF from DriveThruRPG for an even $5. Pretty cool. I have always been a fan of Space 1889. Back in the days where it was uh, actually from GDW. Yeah, it was from GDW, and uh, always dug it. Always had a very cool vibe to it. The mechanics were a little, yeah, but the setting itself was fantastic. So if you are interested, be sure to take a peek if you're a fan of Space 1889. $5 for a 32-page PDF adventure is pretty cool over at drive through RPG. I'm not saying $10.99 for the physical book is outrageous, but I tend to like to, to pick stuff up in PDF. But, uh, yeah, but then again, there's also that whole tactile feeling of holding a book in your hands that just uh, tablets and laptops and your PC just can't replace, can't really replace it. Anyway, I should mention, speaking of drive through RPG, the annual Cthulhu Mythos sale is on. Oh, yeah. If you're, a, if you're a follower of the gaming gang or you watch The Daily Dope, you know I'm a huge Lovecraft fan. So you can save over the next eight days over at Drive-Thru RPG, as well as some of the other drive through sites, because HP Lovecraft's birthday is almost here. 
and there are over 1,000, you heard me right, over 1,000 PDFs marked 20% off for a limited time in the Cthulhu Mythos sale. The sale includes Call of Cthulhu, Delta Green, Actun Cthulhu, Trail of Cthulhu, and more. And you can also find more savings at Drive Through Comics and Drive Through Fiction. Whenever I talk about the Drive Through sites, I always point out if you're going to go visit, please stop by thegaminggang.com first, click on one of our banners, and then if you happen to make a purchase, I get a small portion of that sale, very small portion. But all those little bits really do add up and they really do help out thegaminggang.com and thus the Daily Dell. So, all right. So I'm going to dive into Kids on Bikes in just a couple of minutes. Do want to uh, kind of do some house cleaning a little bit, make mention of a few things. Also dip into the mailbag real quickly. So do want to mention that ugh, stupid me didn't even notice recently that the Gaming Gang channel over at YouTube now has over 400 videos. Not too shabby. This is actually episode, I believe, 143 of the Daily Dope. So pretty cool, pretty nice. And I've got more Gen Con interviews that I am trying to get out there, as well as I'm going to do some standalone videos as well. So like I said, pretty cool. Do want to mention one of those videos uh, from Gen Con is my interview with John Kadichi from Ninja Division. And when I talked to John, I was not fully aware of the debacle that has gone on for Super Dungeon Explorer Legend or Legends. I was not aware of it. I do realize now that it did raise over $1.2 million on Kickstarter and the backers are still waiting for their copies. Plus, I found out that I guess there are still people waiting for their copies of Rail Raiders to arrive, which I gotta admit, that is not too cool because I actually had received a review copy of that quite a ways back. Uh, yeah. So I, I apologize to folks who have watched the interview. I wasn't aware of these things. If I had been, I would have asked. That's the kind of person I am. I would have asked about it. I don't care if I would have pissed John off and had him go, well, hell with the gaming gang. I'm not sending you guys anything anymore. I would have asked about it and found out what the hell was going on. Now, I know John did comment a little bit that uh, they've learned their lesson that they are working on one thing at a time now as far as instead of like, you know, spreading themselves thin and having a bunch of different stuff going on. I do think the Super Dungeon Explorer Legends is going to come out. Backers are going to receive it. I don't believe John just took $1.2 million of backers money and is going to be like, ha ha. Because if that was the case, he wouldn't be at Gen Con. So I'm sure a lot of people walked up to him and said, what the F is going on, right? So just want to mention that. And I do apologize if I had been aware of this. It is a question I would have asked. Also want to mention Elliot Miller and I are looking at once again, teaming up and putting together a live stream for Extra Life, which takes place November 3rd this year. I got to say, we had a hell of a lot of fun with my nephew, Cameron as well as Julie Ahern from Greenbrier Games, as well as some of her pals last year. Ellie and I are actually thinking of doing it this year from one of our houses. And once again, including Cameron, as well as some of his high school friends, who actually do make up some of the rest of the gaming gang. And we'll probably do about 12 hours like we did last year and begin at 8 a.m. This year, what I might do is I might reach out to some companies or reach out to folks out there just on Twitter, just Twitter followers, and say, hey, here's a list of games that we're looking to maybe do. What ones do you want to watch us play? Last year, we left that more kind of in the hands of game companies saying, oh, hey, we really want to do like a fireside game. So we did Hot Shots. Hey, we really want to do a Stronghold game title and we did, uh, is it We're Not Alone or We Are Not Alone? 
The one with the alien and the other players. It was actually a cool game. I had never played it. So just wanted to float that out there that uh, I will actually be asking followers on Twitter what games would they like to see us play. And we'll actually set aside like two-hour blocks like we did last year. So that is pretty cool. All right, so another item I wanted to uh, talk about is I got an email to the mailbag from Pete in Chicago. Hey, it's a neighbor. Asking, why are my reviews so long and drawn out? I don't want to say they're long and drawn out. I am kind of gabby. I chat a lot. Um... And I do not script the reviews, so you know there are times when I forget something. I, I forget there was one game I did a review on, and I completely zoned out on actually talking about what the victory conditions of it were. <laughs> yeah, but the way I kind of look at it is, the game did not take when I do a review. The game did not take three or three to five minutes to design, or develop, or to be produced. It doesn't take three to five minutes to play the game. And I know there are people out there who bang out these these reviews like three minutes. That is like, boom, that is that is as long as they're going to ever go on the reviews. That's fine. That's If that's the way they want to do it, that's cool. With me, I find that a little disrespectful to the designer as well as the publisher. Uh, like, for an example, I did a review of Hitler's Reich from GMT Games yesterday. The review took up the whole show. I didn't even do news. And the review took about an hour to kind of show a little bit of the, how to play and, and things like that and share my thoughts on it. So I am just not a guy who's going to do a review of something and, and bang it out in, you know, five or ten minutes. I just, it's just not my style. So uh, sorry, Pete. Uh, I apologize. If it's not your thing, I mean, you don't have to watch. I mean, it's just just the way it is, right? Some people really like that I get in depth about stuff and other people are probably like, yeah, I'm just going to hop to the end and see what his thoughts are. Okay. So last thing I want to talk about is what is on deck for the daily dope. And I'm going to move kids on bikes out of the way for a second. Tomorrow I will be showing you how to play and reviewing tiny epic galaxies from Gamelin games. And I have been, uh, cheating a little bit and I keep talking about how I'm going to be reviewing this on tomorrow's show and how I really like it. So I really like it. You're going to find out why. On Monday's show, I am going to unbox and take a first look at Master of the Galaxy from Ares Games. This is a quick playing 4X science fiction game. This was a Gen Con release. So I am very, very interested. It looks pretty cool. I saw it uh, being demoed at both Origins as well as Gen Con, so this should be pretty interesting. So that's on Monday's show. On Tuesday's show, I will be unboxing and taking a first look at Fist of Dragonstone's Tavern Edition from my buddy Stephen Bonacore's Stronghold Games. So uh, this is a reskin of uh, the original Bruno Fiduti, uh I believe it's just Fist of Dragonstones. So I am not familiar with the game, so I'm going to get to take a first look at that. On Wednesday, it's War Game Wednesday. I am going to be looking at Brawling Battleships from Lost Battalion Games. It is a strategy card game. The thing that I'm very interested uh, about this is there's supposed to be like 60 World War I pre dreadnought ships included in this so i am very very interested in checking that out and then on thursday next week i will dive on into outbreak undead second edition the survivor's guide which is kind of the player's handbook i believe there's sort of a, a gm's book that's also coming from hunters entertainment and renegade game studios i'm not positive about it but uh, in my interview I did with Ivan Van Norman, as well as Chris De La Rosa, they were kind of hinting towards there being like a GM book. So that is the Survivor's Guide. Now, I gotta be honest, 
I was a few minutes late getting the show started because I just got War Chest from AEG. Sweet. This is an abstract kind of war game. It's for two or four players. Looks pretty cool. I really like how the units are on poker chips are nice, meaty. Okay, got some heft to them. So this is going to be interesting. There are 16 different units. All of them have their own unique abilities. So I am going to be busting that out. Do want to mention I am going to do some standalone videos. Hopefully over the weekend, fingers crossed, I don't get dragged off to babysit or pet sit again or anything like that. But I'm going to do some standalone stuff. And I apologize, my sinuses are still all messed up. So I'm kind of sniffly and my voice is kind of, ah. At least I'm not hacking and coughing yet. Yet. But we're going to look at Archmage from Starling Games. This is the collector's edition. This looks really cool. It's supposed to be a pretty, pretty meaty strategy game, fantasy game. So that's going to be cool. I got the thing. Infection at Outpost 31, which is from Project Raygun, Mondo, as well as USAopoly. Huge fan of the thing. So I'm looking forward to trying to bust this out pretty quick. And then I also have Legends of Andor which is from Cosmos. I have never played a Cosmos game and Cosmos is trying to make more inroads into North America. And uh, I was given a review copy of this to kind of kick the tires on my coverage. So I know it's been out for a while, but it does look pretty cool. And you now, come on, it's a fantasy game, man. Fantasy games, love them. Love them to death, unless they're crap. Then I, then I don't love them. But I got loads of other stuff as well. I've got the uh, the Prelude expansion for terraforming Mars. Uh, I've got loads and loads of stuff on the horizon. But just want to let people know what is going to be uh, scheduled for episodes of the Daily Dope, both tomorrow as well as much of next week. All right, so people have listened to me ramble on for long enough. So I am going to be taking a look at Kids on Bikes which is from Hunter's Entertainment and Renegade Game Studios. It's written by Jonathan Gilmore and Doug Lewandowski. Hopefully I got Doug's name correct. It is written and designed by the two of them. Artwork is provided by Heather Vaughn. The core book will be available September 26th in both a standard 80-page soft cover, which is going to carry an MSRP of $25, or a 156 page deluxe hardcover for $35. I do believe it's gonna be available in PDF as well. I am not positive as of yet. So I have the deluxe edition and we are going to take a peek over here. I'm gonna switch cameras. So this is the deluxe edition of Kids on Bikes. As you can see, this is a hardcover. This is sort of a digest size book. So I, I, I dig that. I like the digest size. I like, um, especially when you can get a digest size and you're saving quite a bit of money uh, as far as comparing it to the larger, what is it? Uh, 11 by eight and a half books. So it is role playing about small towns and big adventures. So let's take a look at the info on the back. The door to the old house creaks open, the rust on the hinges groaning as you see the dust floating like spores in the air inside. By the faint light of your cheap flashlights, you see the stairs to the upper floor, its railings gnarled and broken like crooked teeth. Their curve makes the stairs seem almost like a hungry grin, and you wonder if their age will support your weight. Still, you must go in. The only question is, who will go first? In Kids on Bikes, you'll take on the roles of everyday people grappling with strange, terrifying, and very, very powerful forces that they cannot defeat, control, or even fully understand. The only way to face them is to work together, use your strengths, and know when you just have to run as fast as you can. Or get on your bike and pedal as fast as you can. 
I really want to check this out. I I really, really enjoyed Bubblegum Shoe. Uh, I thought that was a fantastic role-playing game uh, based on the gumshoe system. Really, really like that. I think Tales from the Loop is phenomenal. Love the artwork. Really, really dig the, the system. I, I reviewed that as well. Kids on Bikes kind of falls into that category. So if you're a fan of movies like E.T. or Super 8 or The Goonies, right? If you're a fan of The Goonies or shows like Stranger Things, then this is going to be right up your alley. So let's crack this on open. Now, I did talk to Ivan Van Norman and Chris uh, De La Rosa a bit about this during my interview at Gen Con. And one of the questions I had asked was, what, what would incent someone to check out Kids on Bikes if they're already, you know, say, playing Tales from the Loop or maybe even Bubblegum Shoe? And they both were talking about how this is more sandbox. This is really more of a sandbox system as opposed to, say, Tales from the Loop. Now, Bubblegum Shoe is pretty sandbox, too. But um, I like that. I like that fact where you can kind of adapt it to however you want to do it. I mean, if you wanted to adapt Kids on Bikes to represent more like the first part of It, like the, the film that recently came out, that's like the first half of Stephen King's book, I'm pretty sure you can pull that off with Kids on Bikes. Kids, I should say, on bikes. So, as I mentioned, this is the deluxe edition. It opens up with a comic. Now, the comic book isn't that long. Uh, I think it's maybe like four or five pages. Ah, had to wet the whistle a little bit. So, pretty cool artwork. Well, maybe the comic's a little bit longer. No, oh, to be continued. Dun, dun, dun. Do have to mention... This is the deluxe edition. This will carry an MSRP of $35, whereas the soft cover, which is about 80 pages, that's according to, to Renegade. I do not know for certain if it will be only about 80 pages. That one's $25, so personally, in my opinion, for an extra $10, you probably owe it to yourself if you're interested in checking out kids on bikes, you owe it to yourself to pick up this hardcover deluxe edition because yes it's got some comic it's got a little bit of you know comic book artwork to start off things but you're still looking at about 70 pages of other material that's going to be in the deluxe edition that's not going to be in the standard edition now there was a free rpg day release for kids on bikes i have not seen it available in pdf yet I would assume it should at some point pop up so people can kind of dip their toes in. But uh, I have not seen a PDF of it. Well, at least it's not at Drive Through RPG, and I did not see a link for it at the Renegade Game Studios website. One thing that there is on the Renegade Game Studios website is a link to download, and I want to say it's a 24 page PDF, which is a playbook which includes a lot of different archetypes. Both, I, I think it's like kids and adults, characters and stuff, so pretty cool. So here we have setting boundaries. So it's basically saying before starting to create your characters, you and the game master should address the kinds of things that the players want to see in the game and the things they don't want to see. So uh, a system like Kids on Bikes is going to appeal both to adults like myself, right? I was in high school in the 80s. I was a freshman in high school in 1981. So I was around for all of that stuff that everybody's so nostalgic about now. I remember all that. I had a members-only jacket. I listened to Depeche Mode and things like that. I went and saw movies like E.T., in the theater so there's there's a big appeal for that plus there's also an appeal for younger gamers for games like this because they can play characters that somewhatly represent themselves in a a fictional world 
So, of course, having adults playing as kids, you're going to be able to, to delve into topics that you probably wouldn't delve into with younger preteens or early teen gamers simply because it's not going to be appropriate, right? So pretty cool artwork. So here we're going to see uh, world building, talking about collaborative creation, suggestions, multiple sessions, so creating campaigns. One thing that I have noticed, and I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say kids on bikes probably falls into the same category whereas like Tales from the Loop. Tales from the Loop isn't really a system that you're going to you're going to play really long months long campaigns or a year long campaign with you know dozens and dozens of game sessions. Games like Kids on Bikes, Bubblegum Shoe as well as Tales from the Loop are more aimed at kind of you know shorter campaigns you know, four or five sessions, things like that. So we've got character creation. Talking about character stats. So we got brains, brawn, fight, flight, charm, and grit. True grit. <coughs> so we have a brief explanation of the dice. And during my interview at Gen Con, I was informed that it's basically the better your character is at something, the higher die that they'll receive so if they're like superb right it's a d20 whereas they're bad at something it's a d6 below average d8 above average d10 i do not know how the complete system works obviously there should be some sort of a difficulty number involved that uh, a player is trying to best now it's possible there's skills in here that will give bonuses as well or maybe the skills also have dice so, of course, you're going to need to have, a, a, you know, a four-sided die, six-sider, eight-sider, ten-sider, twelve, and twenty. Talking about the ages, it says for some of the tropes, you also need to pick your character's age, child, teen, or adult. Groups of characters can certainly be a mixture of all three ages. So, as an example, if you were looking to run something similar lines to, say, Stranger Things, you could conceivably have teenagers as well as adults involved character wise involved in the game and you know real life wise too why not so you have selecting strengths and flaws including characters who are disabled or neurotypical race as race ethnicity gender and sexuality intro, introductions and questions I have the impression Kids on Bikes is, a, is going to be a game that's more driven by narrative and storytelling than it will be about mechanics and crunchiness. So we've got some quick start questions, one-sided questions. Some examples here. Complete questions. So part of the, the character creation process is going to be asking questions and answering those questions. Finishing touches. Creating a character from scratch. Playing the game. Stat checks. Choosing a stat for the check. Difficulty. Here we go. Difficulty numbers. So, like I thought, there would probably be some sort of diff difficulty numbers that need to be uh, probably beaten in order to succeed. Got planned actions and snap decisions. Guidelines for failure or success. Oh, there you go. So depending on how how uh, how well you roll or how poorly you roll should determine the um, how successful you are or how badly you fail. Talking about combat encounters, injuries, and death. Uh, I believe this is a game where you're not going to be killing off the characters. That's not to say you can't have NPCs who, you know, bite the dust. Oh, Barbara, we barely knew you in Stranger Things. Talking about uh, narrative results for roles. I would take a guess we should have some social conflict on here. Oh, so we got powered characters. 
So powered characters like, say, Eleven. Information from the GM. Player safety. A key part of any role-playing experience is pulling players out of their comfort zones and often forcing them to make difficult decisions for their character. Will Arthur choose to disobey his parents and dive into the river? <laughs> or will he let the raft that they tied off to a rock float away when it comes loose? <laughs> Starting to craft the story. I think... Not positive. We'll see if we run across it. I think there's actually a setting that's included in this deluxe edition as well. Narrative control, tone, and pace. I'm the sort of player... I uh, I shouldn't say player. I'm the sort of GM. I like to keep a pretty quick pace going. Uh, I like to focus on story, but I like to move things along. Uh, sometimes players who aren't familiar with my style of running a game start thinking you know like overthinking stuff and it's like okay I, tr I tend to explain to my players that imagine this is the biggest budget movie ever right budget doesn't matter how you know it's all about the excitement action drama it's not hey did it matter if the the backpack that person had slung over their shoulder was red or blue and it's an NPC they're never going to see again. Uh, so that's how I kind of like to roll, uh, run games. So we've got uh, relationship questions, strengths, flaws, cowardly, oh. possible aspects for powered characters, personality traits, Got a uh, relationship to the group, psychic power. Yeah, because, you know, the government just, they love to grab kids that have some sort of psychic powers. I don't know what it is. So we've got the different tropes. So we got blue collar worker, brilliant mathlete, br uh, brutish jock. These are the, I believe these are the ones that you'll find in the playbook where they already have these uh, character sheets already prepared for these, well, they're calling them tropes. I, I'm calling them archetypes. So we got laid back slacker, plastic beauty, popular kid, reclusive, eccentric, overprotective parents, scout, stoic professional, wannabe, young provider, difficulty ratings and consequences. Ah, here we go. So this is the, the character sheet. Yes, and the kitties are down here today with me, and uh, Pinky's chiming in. Hiya, Pinky. Relax, kiddo. So this is uh, where uh, the playbook has the characters already kind of filled out. They're not pre-gens, I don't believe. They're just the archetypes or tropes. I get a kick out of the backpack, though. So I guess you're supposed to like write down the stuff that you're carrying in the backpack here. All right, so I'm taking a guess what we've got here. This was 74, 5, 76. I would not be shocked if the standard edition probably runs somewhere from about here to here because it's supposed to be 80 pages. So we have strange events in small towns. So I would take a guess is probably game master information. Players shouldn't be diving into this. Dads on mowers, strange things afoot at the Circle Q. <laughs> oh, and it actually shows different different towns, too. So, I was wrong. There's more than one setting. There's quite a few different settings. Cheyenne, Wyoming. My gosh. My gosh. I've been through a lot of these places. Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Uh, I think some of these may be made up, though, but I don't know. So, introduction to the modules. Dads on mowers. Suburbtopia, USA. Talking about strange things afoot at the Circle Q. Yes, kids sitting there playing arcade games at the like local convenience store. We did a lot of that when we were kids. 
So we've got all these different modules. Snow days add chanky cheese. Jeez. Oh, so one of the one of the big aspects about this game is that you're you're supposed to be kind of playing small town life as well. Uh, maybe even a great source of inspiration would be Erie, Indiana, the the TV show that was on for a while. That it was, which was pretty cool, but of course got canceled. Pointing pleasantly at Point Pleasant. Boxcar Boys Railroads of the USA. I like the fact that uh, there's art sprinkled throughout, but it's not overwhelming the book. You're getting a lot of content. <laughs> Torn memories, content warnings, violence against children by adults. The Snyder Sisters. So yeah, so even here for an example, this uh, this involves werewolves. But as we can see, this really is kind of a sandbox system. Only had all of about 70 pages of rules, and then it wasn't even really a whole lot of rule stuff. Looks like the mechanics altogether were maybe eight pages or so. Okay, double trouble at Skateland. I was never a roller skater. Ghosts and steel. Government conspiracies, memory loss, memory erasing. And Nazis! There you go. Minor threats. The Culling in Cheyenne. Oh, yikes. Human sacrifice, mind control, missing children, missing pets, violence against animals. Well, wouldn't it be violence against people too? Because we're talking human sacrifice, man. Okay, I have been to Cheyenne, Wyoming umpteen times. And I'm telling you, I don't think there's any human sacrifice going on. Between the cracks. Butter tarts and broken bones. Very nice. This looks cool. Uh, I appreciate the, appreciate the fact that I can probably sit on down and bust through this in an evening. Reading through this. Which I am going to do uh, very shortly. Because this looks, this looks like a lot of fun. One thing... Uh, Honestly, because most of the people that I'm running role-playing games for right now are, like, in their teens, I don't know if I would necessarily bust this out with them. But uh, I would probably break this out with, like, Elliot Miller, my brother, maybe even my sister-in-law as players. Maybe throw my nephew Cameron into it as well. But uh, seeing that, you know, everybody except Cameron grew up in the 80s, I think it would be kind of cool to uh, to break this out. So, of course, I will have a review of Kids on Bikes, the Deluxe Edition, very shortly. Probably have it done in, uh, yeah, maybe we'll do it on two weeks from today. Because I do want to look at Outbreak Undead, the second edition Survivor's Guide, next week. So, that is what we find when we kind of dive on into Kids on Bikes from Renegade Game Studios, as well as Hunter's Entertainment. As I mentioned previously, the core book is going to be available next month on September 26th. There is a standard 80-page softcover edition that's going to carry an MSRP of $25. Or, got to admit, to me it seems like a much better deal to snag this 156-page deluxe hardcover edition for $35. I mean, it's only another $10. So stay tuned for the review of Kids on Bikes. All right. So that is it for today's show. Once again, if you aren't watching an episode or one of our videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Come on, by now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. I will be back tomorrow on Friday, and I will be reviewing Tiny Epic Galaxies from Game Win Games. So, until then, enjoy the rest of your Thursday, and as always, thank you very much for watching.
Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you liked this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.